If I have any opinions at all, I mean, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I might have a few. <laughs> well, orgasms, uh, uh, I think that the first thing that people think about when they hear that word, uh, which is why I used it, because it's controversial, is orgasms. And um, not realizing that there are many, many, many gasms. Gasms is defined as anything that makes you feel good. Christmas could be a gasm, you know. People could be a gasm. Something that someone says to you could be a gasm. Or a gasm could be a, <laughs> could be a gasm. I, I really don't think that a gasm could be underrated. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's something that makes you feel really good. How could that be underrated? So I, I think it's definitely rated where it should be. It's, it's, it's rated way up there somewhere. So um, I hope that the album makes people feel good when they hear it and they have gasms. <laughs> it's according to when you get it and, and what kind of, well, how, how potent it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it can, it can be overrated. You can get some. You can get some weed that's really overrated, and it's absolutely nothing. And then you can get some that's underrated, and they didn't warn you <laughs> exactly what it was. So, yeah, as a, as a weed smoker, I say, yeah, you you can get it's, it's both of those many times. And 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 I'm so happy now that they have dispensaries because many times when you had to get it, you know, just where you got it, it was overrated. <laughs> But now you know they have the dispensaries and, and it's illegal and you can go just get it and you have a choice of several kinds and whatever. The first time I got one of those feelings from smoking weed that I felt like, oh man, this is too much for me. I, I, wanna, I wanna stop this, <laughs> you know, please let me come down. You know, I was paranoid. So, but then uh, later on in life, it would happen again or it happened, it's happened a few times because like I said, you never know what condition you're your, your, yourself is in when you smoke. You know, you could be in a, your, 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 your physical self or your mental self could be in a place whereas, okay, it's not cool for you right now. But normally, it's great. It's relaxing. And I never, ever understood, even before we became legal, I never understood why it was illegal and drinking wasn't. You see, drinking is, is a violent kind of, it's a, it's a, Alcohol is a, is, a, is a violent kind of killer kind of thing that eats your liver and your kidneys and your, your, your organs and, you know, and people get violent and want to, you know, do all kinds of violent things many times on alcohol. I've never seen anybody do that on weed. I've never seen anybody do that. So I didn't understand why alcohol could be legal and weed not be. Many times. <laughs> I've had orgasm experience for me many times. That's why I do it. Because, and, and, and I've, had, I've had experiences that have been negative with it too. You know, I think it's according to what your, what your body is uh, like at that moment, what your metabolism is doing or whatever it is, you know, because weed affects you different ways at different times. You know, I've smoked some weed, whereas I swore if I ever came down, I would never smoke again in my life, you know, so, so. But uh, the very first time I ever smoked uh, after, you know, I was um, just getting ready to graduate from high school. Uh, I always played sports in high school. I played football and basketball and baseball for my high school and stuff like that. So my friends that I grew up with, and I tell my kids this all the time, don't tell me about peer pressure because if you did it, you did it because you wanted to. Because I grew up with some gangsters, man. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, they be robbing people. And that. I'm not going to do that. They give me a little room about as big as this area that I'm sitting in right now and blow smoke in my, smoke in my face. We're going to get you contact. We're going to do it. But the very first time I ever smoked with them and got high, it was on a Christmas day. And I'll never forget that because it was beautiful. I mean, it was just a beautiful, beautiful feeling and a beautiful day. Had a wonderful time. Everything was funny. You know, it was one, one of those highs. So it was great. That's what enticed me to do, to do it again <laughs> because I, I, you know, I told my friends that I didn't know it was like this because I might have started sooner than this. But it was, it was beautiful and I enjoyed it. One of the things that I enjoy the most about going to work is being there with the people and having them react to what we're doing and we're reacting to them. And I tell people all the time, we have a two hour party and it kills me when people come and uh, because you're in show business, they think that your life is wine, women and song. And after the concert, they'll come and say, okay, where's the party, man? I just had the party. 
for two hours I just had to party. So that, 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 but the people make it a party. I, I think that it, if it gets out of hand violently, yes, I think it could be, you know, I've been doing this for a long time and I played uh, most places you could even think of, you know, and, and, and there's, a, there's a thing back in the day, especially called the Chitlin Circuit, where you'd play some gigs that you'd be afraid to go in there. <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I played a few of those and I played some of where, you know, actually violence did break out. I played those too. I played everything you can think of, especially uh, in the early days going to the South. You know, I've been shot at for trying to go to the toilet. So uh, it's, uh, you know, it's according to where you are and what the circumstances are as to whether or not it's, a, it's, it's a underrated or overrated. I think that uh, if you're talking about happiness or joy in a situation like that, that's really underrated. Well, when you start talking about kids, there are a lot of things that I think are uh, overrated or underrated, and it, I think it's according to the author and what they're trying to portray to the kids. You know, I, I think about back in the day, the old nursery rhymes, they were all negative when you think about them. rock by baby on the treetops. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall, and down will come baby cradle. Will... How pleasant is that for a child to think about that? Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king horses and all the king men couldn't put Humpty to the So Humpty is destroyed. How pleasant is that? You know what I'm saying? Jack and Jill went up the hill. Jack fell down, broke his crown. All those were negative. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just don't know how people got away with calling those nursery rhymes because they're, they're, they're morbid. So I don't know how people got away with that. But I think that nowadays people are trying to do things uh, or, or write stuff for children that's constructive, that, that, that gives them hope and gives them, you know, the, the, the idea that they can be whoever they want to be. If you've, if, if you've ever been a parent, which I have, there are a lot of things that you do as a parent or that you participate in that you're not necessarily wanting to participate in. You know, like, I, like a lot of little TV shows and stuff that come on in the morning. I would sit there and watch, watch that with Natasha and Boris and all those people like that. You know, I didn't really want to be there, Bullwinkle, all that. I didn't want to be there, but my kids were watching that. So they wanted me to watch it with them. So I had to kind of participate in what they were loving and what they were liking uh, for their benefit. <laughs> Well, uh, for me as a songwriter, uh, I couldn't say anything if, uh, except for it would be the best explanation I could give on that. It would be underrated because there's no, there's no feeling for me as a, as a songwriter than to have someone singing my songs. You know, I, I remember when the kids first came out and they were sampling people's songs and, and putting your music into their music. And people say to me, oh, man, they're sampling the songs. Isn't that a drag? No, 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 no. Sample all of mine. <laughs> every song I ever wrote in my entire life. Please, because, man, there's, there's a billion songs on earth. You know, if one of mine meant enough to you for you to include it in your music or whatever you do to replicate it, that's fine with me. Please do all of mine because as a songwriter, I think you can't beat that. And I, I want people to sing my songs. I want people to enjoy them forever and ever. I tell people all that I want to be Beethoven. I want 500 years from now for them to be playing my music and singing it and, and all that. Right now we're working on a biopic for me. We've done the script and we're the people, the powers that be are looking at it now to see what we're gonna do. But I think that if, you, if you're gonna do a biopic as, a, as, as someone who people know, then you should be candid. If not, just keep it. Because uh, you know who wants to know what they already know? My, my two top biopics of all times for me are Ray and the Temptations miniseries. Those were, because I, you see, I knew, I knew Ray and I grew up with the Temptations. So the accuracy in those biopics were, they just made them them. And uh, I knew Ray well and I know Jamie. And when I see Jamie, I tell him, I have never seen you in Ray because he was Ray. He was Ray. So uh, that, that, that's, that's, that's two of my favorites and they, and they rate right up there with each other. I'm an early riser, and I, I always have been, because I, I used to run. I used to run every morning. I used to have a, a, a bargain with myself uh, that no matter what I had done the night before, I had to get up and run at least five miles. And I did that for years. I, I got to the point where I was running marathons and that stuff like that. So I'm an early riser, 
and I play golf. There's really nothing else you could probably call me at five o'clock in the morning and say, hey, Smoke, let's get up and go do this. And I'm going to say, where? <laughs> because if you tell me, let's go play some softball or some bad, I'm going to hang up on you, really. But if you say golf, I want to know where immediately. So I'm an early riser, so it doesn't bother me. But now, being an early riser, and it's ironic that I'm in show business, man, because I'm an early bedtime person, too. You know, when it comes to 11, 12 o'clock, and this has been me all my life, 11, 12 o'clock at night, I'm sleepy. Now, I'm, you know, I'm, let's go to the club at 2 o'clock. No, 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 not me. I'm sleepy. So I, I normally, when I can, go to bed early, too. See, I, I'm, I'm a good sleeper. And, um, you know, I can go sleep on a dime I, normally. You know, it's very seldom that I get into a place where I, I, I really can't sleep. Uh, a flight from... LaGuardia to Kennedy, I go to sleep. <laughs> well, for me, it was um, too soon. I, I, I you know, I, I retired too young. I retired because my, 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 my two oldest kids were born finally. My, my then wife and I had had seven miscarriages, okay? And so she was in the group, she was in the miracles. And she came off the road and we, you know, finally had two kids. And um, I uh, didn't want my kids not to know me because the miracles and I traveled all the time. You know, 90% of the time we were gone. So I didn't want them not to know me. I wanted to be there so I could see them walk and say their first words and things like that. So uh, I retired for, the, for that reason. So at that point for me, it was underrated because I was getting ready to spend the time with my family that I wanted to be and have them know me and all that. That was my, my thoughts of it at first because I said, okay, the Miracles and I have done everything a group could do, okay? So I'm retired, that's good, that was, that was great for me. But that was an overrated statement for me, an overrated thought for me because it wasn't. I made an album after a year because I had written a song to the Miracles called Sweet Harmony. And I wanted to make discs for each one of them and give it to them. And the lady who was our A&R director at Motown at that time convinced me, in fact, to make a record of it so the world could know this is how I feel about the Miracles. And I, so I finally agreed to do that. And um, then she came to me and said, well, you know, you got this record, you need an album. So I did that but it was not on my own need or want to do that because I, I wanted to retire forever. I thought I would never be in the outer edges of show business again. And after three years, I was climbing the walls. I was miserable. So it became overrated. <laughs> Retirement was definitely overrated because it wasn't what I expected, nor was it what I could cope with. This was so much fun. Okay. <laughs> I had a ball, man. <laughs> <laughs>